Black metal, the genre full of allegations, murders, church burnings, Satan, and a whole lot of jaded history as well as a ton of different genres and subgenres as well as rawness. You know what I think we need to add into the formula? Nazis. Welcome to A Rough Guide, my name is Alex. NSBM. You'll hear this term thrown around a lot. In the black metal scene, you most likely know a lot of the surface level about it, but if you are unfamiliar with what NSBM stands for, it stands for National Socialist Black Metal. And you can kind of put two and two together of what that entails. NSBM artists are basically people that perform black metal with beliefs that align with the neo-Nazi movement. A Nazism, big fucking tree, lot of branches, it can go in a lot of different directions, and boiling something down to just one thing and nothing else can be a little stupid, a little rudimentary. I'm not gonna go into every single little diverging path of NSBM, but what I will say is that not every NSBM artist is just through and through a neo-Nazi or identify with that label. It is a little more nuanced than that because unfortunately the neo-Nazi movement lended itself to sprouting a whole host of different shitty piles of dog feces when it comes to movements. The Norwegian black metal scene was a difficult time. While it created some of the greatest black metal releases of all time, as well as some of the most intriguing history to go over, there were more allegations than just church burnings and murders. This is where historically I want to talk about something a little bit objectively, and I'm not going to say my opinions on this personal topic because I want to keep my own politics out of this and just stay objective with the historical accuracy of it. Black metal from the get-go was something that was rooted in a lot of nationalist tendencies. Not necessarily in the traditional or classical sense, but when you look at black metal, especially in like the true cult way, it has a lot of ties to paganism and neo-paganism. And before anyone fucking comes up on my doorstep telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to that, I consider myself very much on a pagan spectrum as well. I have Scottish roots in me, I have native roots in me, and I am very spiritual when it comes to connections to that. So I've not only done many, many tens of hours of research on this, but I know the fuck what I'm talking about. It's no surprise that a lot of black metal musicians adopted a lot of these nationalist tendencies with how edgy the early scene was. Besides the allegations, besides the church burnings and murders, there was also like a mental prosecution of gay men at the time, as well as killings and assaults of gay men at the time in the scene. This is not a personal attack against pagans because I genuinely do love pagans. I will say there is a linkage to what is known as being pure blooded or the blood of the land and especially in scandinavia which is where paganism is at its peak at just throughout all of history even up to now this mentality makes it to where a lot of people will disavow or see people as inferior they are not the same skin tone as them the black circle of the 90s norwegian scene as well as helvetta like the record shop that was opened at the time it definitely did attract some philosophical people. There's nothing wrong with researching philosophies that you agree with or disagree with. I think that is perfectly healthy and fine. But the human condition needs something to rely on. It needs something to latch onto the tit of and hold on to for dear life. And when you bring together people that are already broken and very clearly mentally ill suffering individuals they're going to latch onto things that just make the world make sense and that is a big thing i want to highlight people want to look for things that make sense when you feel disconnected from the world when you feel disassociated from the world when you finally find a philosophy that seems to make sense of the things that do not make sense to you you are going to feel inclined to believe in that and I know that Nietzsche was a big deal for these people, and obviously Nietzsche wasn't a fucking neo-Nazi, but by the same token, he definitely lended his philosophies to a lot of people who would adopt them later, and I'm not saying if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck, but I'm just saying, if your beliefs in the beginning and from the get-go sort of inspire a bunch of people to believe in that and use it for hate speech and use it for rhetoric, I think that says a lot about where you're coming from. Now, whether or not you believe in nihilism or cynicism as a logical thing, that's up to you. I want to go over a couple of things that I think are relevant. In 1994, Hellhammer's drummer basically said, and I'm quoting this, I'll put it this way. We don't like black people here, 
black metal is for white people. Not to mention here it says in 1995, Gall described N-words as subhuman and stated his admiration for Verkenis, Bard Verkenis, and Adolf Hitler. However, he has to distance himself from these statements. There's obviously that thing of do you push back hard against the things that you are because y'all know Gall is a gay man. This scene also attracted people because of its anti-religious sentiments because neo-nazism is very anti-christian in its roots not always and it very much depends there are plenty of christians who are neo-nazis unfortunately but nsbm is a spectrum there are a lot of artists that make their beliefs fully clear with the imagery with the song titles with everything about them they leave nothing up to interpretation they leave nothing up to the mind and they put their opinions and beliefs out there on full display other projects prefer to be more underground with their beliefs only to their followers followers and the local scene whereas putting out a message as if they are just a normal black metal band there are unfortunately plenty of times where a very popular black metal band is later found out to have nsbm roots or beliefs later down the line i remember famously probably the biggest case of this was despel omega i remember this being such a big deal at the time that anthony fantano who review Despel Omega at the time very positively ended up completely taking down his content surrounding the band and even talking about it like I believe on like a tweet or something and I know y'all praise on the altar of him and I know I'm the CEO of shit talking Varg but he was a massive influence and instrumental part of developing the NSBM scene unintentionally or intentionally when he first started he was just very anti-christian he was very anti-religion he was very anti-church and slowly but surely this sort of mixed with his paganism and in a witch's cauldron he stirred it around and it ended up coming out to be very neo-nazi in its demeanor and whether or not he identified with the term whether or not you believe he was a neo-nazi i don't personally care either way i just think that objectively when you look at what he did especially when he was in prison and he pretty much started a neo-nazi coalition his beliefs aligned with the classical definitions of what neo-nazism were and that's how a lot of nsbm bands in the early scene in the 90s started people who adopted paganism heathenry as a movement as a philosophical or religious outlet and that combined with their broken attitudes and their anti-establishment beliefs sort of mixed in with that pure blood approach and that sort of led to xenophobia racism homophobia and a whole host of other things and you know me i'm easy going i don't really care about the oh, homophobia racism that type of thing like i don't like to just throw those terms around willy-nilly but there are bands that really live up to horrendousness i did a whole video on break of the uns and gas fumes who are a japanese nationalist band that take the nsbm scene out of the pagan roots and put it more towards a nationalist belief with song titles like annihilation commando against temples of past as well as alone marching with monks body parts as well as worthless martyrdom molestation you get the point this led to bands being blacklisted records being blacklisted but this also led to specific record labels being associated with the NSBM scene. NSBM, much like other stylistic genres like gore grind or porno grind, they are what they are because of their lyrical themes as well as their imagery. And that's what made some bands like Despero Omega difficult to really ascertain whether they were NSBM or not because a lot of bands sort of hide their beliefs until you dig a bit deeper into their discography or their meanings or you're a big deep diehard fan that just knows everything about them. When it comes to NSBM there are people that disavow it entirely. Within the scene there are plenty of black metal musicians that pretty much say fuck NSBM, don't listen to it, don't support it, don't support the artist, don't support anything about it and disavow it completely and I truly do believe that is the right thing to do, but I don't believe in censorship. Whereas there's another group of people who listen to it anyway and support it, obviously. And then you have this third group of people who do not care whether something is NS or not and listen to it regardless whether they support it or not. Sometimes they do buy, sometimes they do support, but they don't agree with the messages. The classical term you hear of separating the art from the artist. Nowadays, NSBM, sort of like the DSBM movement, is as thriving as it ever has been in the underground. And I can't help but wonder just how much it thrives in the underground, because for all of the bands that we see, 
and for all of the artists and projects that we are able to see on the surface level, the NSBM scene is notoriously underground and it makes me wonder just how much is happening in the underground that is more horrible than anything we see on the surface because, you know, musical underground scenes can be even more horrific and more brutal than you could ever imagine. Ultimately, it is completely up to you if you support something that is stylistically rooted in that. I don't think black metal was inherently an evil thing that gave way for this to happen or was inevitable. I think it just attracted vulnerable people who needed something to believe in, and because they needed something to believe in, they were able to latch onto this harsh ideology because, like I said before, it helped make sense of the things that didn't make sense. Nowadays, it is kind of sometimes hard to determine whether something is NSBM or not if you are just listening to things in the underground because the credibility of stuff as well as the notoriety of something can be a little understated. But if you do not want to support NSBM, I would just suggest looking at the titles of things. Look for subliminal meanings in album titles or album artworks, the name of the band, and you can kind of put two and two together a lot if something is NS or not. But unfortunately, sometimes you just can't tell. But what are your opinions of the NSBM scene? Do you care? Do you not? Do you support it? Do you not? What are your opinions of the musicians? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. I can't wait to hear it. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join the review family today and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is. My name is Dave Morris and I'm signing off saying you care.